So before we can uh, get started with our standard curve and we can read off the, uh, say the concentration of glucose in honey from our standard curve, we need to set up this uh, standard curve. So we need to figure out uh, how we produce these glucose concentrations that we are going to use for our standard. And for that, we have to do a little bit of calculations, but it's not that bad, actually. So here are the concentrations that we want to use for our standard curve. And uh, these are just concentrations that we decide to use. We could potentially use different concentrations, so that's entirely up to us. Uh, but let's say these are the concentrations that we want to use. And now we have to produce these concentrations. And let's say we have a stock solution of glucose, stock solution of glucose. And let's say this stock solution it has a concentration of 100 microgram per milliliter. So let's say that is the stock solution. And now uh, we need to produce a certain amount. And let's say we want to carry out every single reaction in a volume of 3 milliliter. That's exactly the volume that we can fit very nicely into a cuvette in a spectrophotometer. So what we need to do now is we need to figure out how much of this stock solution we need for each solution, for each uh, standard solution uh, to be added. So the first one is really simple because we want a glucose concentration of zero gram per milliliter. So we don't really need to add anything. But then it gets a little bit more uh, complicated and we need to figure out basically how much of a stock solution, how much of the stock of the stock solution of the stock solution do we need to get well for in the first case five microgram per milliliter and we want three milliliter of uh, five microgram per milliliter solution. So the question boils down, how much of the stock solution do we need to get three milliliters of this five microgram per milliliter? And how are we going to do this? Now, this is uh, not terribly difficult to calculate. So we want three milliliter of a five microgram per milliliter solution. That's what we want. That's our first point here. And we have a 100 microgram per milliliter solution. So what we can do is we can use our trusted equation C1 V1 equals C2 V2. So here this would be, for example, the uh, everything related to the stock solution. And this is what we get for the working solution. So all we need to do is we need to put in the number, we need to rearrange that because we are looking for the volume of the stock solution. So our volume of the stock solution equals C2 V2 divided by C1. And we can now put in some numbers. So C2, that is the concentration that we want for our working solution. So that is 5 microgram per milliliter. And we want a volume, that's the V2, of 3 
milliliter and our working solution the concentration of the working of, of the stock solution that's this one here divided by 100 microgram per milliliter what we see is that the units for the concentrations cancel out and we will get everything in milliliter so we have the volume of the stock solution that we need would be five times three milliliter divided by 100 so that gives us 15 divided by 100 that gives us 0 0.15 milliliter so that means we need of the stock solution we need 0 0.15 milliliter of the stock solution and because we want three milliliters of the solution this one here so we need 0 0.15 milliliter of this stock and the rest of that would be water or a buffer or something like that so that would be plus 2.8 five milliliter of water for this particular measurement so if we now look at the next um, data point here that would be a 10 microgram per milliliter solution and we can do exactly the same thing we say we've got a stock solution of 100 microgram per milliliter and we want three milliliters of a 10 microgram per milliliter so again we use our equation c1v1 equals c2v2 we rearrange that we get v1 equals c2v2 divided by c1 we plug in some numbers we put in the, the numbers that we want so we have 10 microgram per milliliter times 3 milliliter and a stock of 100 so if we calculate that 100 microgram per milliliter so the units cancel out and if we calculate that we get 10 times 3 and I'll write that up here that gives us 30 divided by 100 milliliter and that would give us in this case 0 0.3 milliliter of the stock solution that we need and we need to bring it up to 3 milliliters that is what we want so we need to add 2.7 milliliter of water and that is how we do these calculations now if we carry on with these calculations and do that for all our data points we should get a list and instructions how we make up all these um, known concentrations so we would need to have these uh, volumes of the stock solution so if we want to make up the 20 microgram per milliliter we would need 0 0.6 milliliter of the stock solution and because we want to have 3 milliliter we would have to make that up with 2.4 milliliter of water and we get all our uh, concentrations we will get all our concentrations for the known glucose concentrations uh, with the corresponding calculations and remember it always needs to add up to three milliliter because that is what we wanted so i hope to make this make sense and thank you for watching and in the next part we will look at uh, then how we construct our standard curve and how we can use a trend line in Excel to get this uh, best fit of our uh, standard curve.